Hey there, everybody, and welcome back to Black Arrow Gaming. I'm Bob, back for another episode of my second Age of Wonders 4 Advanced Strategy Series. We are back with Steve, ready to continue his quest to slay some dragons and hopefully pull in some sweet tax revenue along the way. He is, um, actually, speaking of which, uh, somebody did tell me, uh, Nell's Monster X told me to rename my capital accordingly, and that's a good point. I think that's the first comment I want to get to this week, so we'll take care of that. There we go, that is much better. All right, so Steve from the IRS is uh, continuing his adventure today, and I have your feedback to go through before I continue. For those of you new to my channel, I do try to go through uh, as much feedback as I can in between episodes in the comments section to incorporate as much as I can into the gameplay. I learn uh, a lot from you guys. I think I've learned more from the comments section of my videos over the years than I have actually from just playing the game itself. So um, I appreciate your feedback, and let's talk about some of that um, as we move forward. So the first one I want to get to is from Hypoactive Novka. A reminder that um, this came up a lot in my last series. It hasn't come up much yet, but it will be important soon in this series. This economic overview button gives you a nice division of all the different provinces into their respective territories. So you don't have to mess around and fumble around with trying to like highlight one or click one to see where it is. Like You can do that, but it's just a quicker, easier way to just divide everything up nicely. And it's gonna be useful here in a moment. I will get to that shortly. Um, from Aniron, skeletons that pop out of bone whores are not in defense mode. That's a good reminder as I go into this next battle um, that the skeletons that pop out of these things can be killed pretty quickly if you get to them right away before they can get their guard up. So basically, if you have another unit ready to, to hit them on the same turn, um, I don't think they'll even retaliate to attacks from the front. They might, I'm not sure about that, but I know they're not on guard mode when they first pop out of the bone horrors. So yeah, good uh, good feedback from an iron on that. From Chris Lighthawk, there's a hidden 25% chance to graze with range attacks. This has to get in, gets into some range attack mechanics that I haven't really talked about much really in any of my series because I wasn't sure how it worked in this game. But basically, according to Chris, and I have not been able to independently verify this myself, but I found that Chris Lighthawk is usually right about this kind of stuff. He checked the combat logs, and basically, when a unit fires a range attack, for example, I will be relying heavily on these mage locks. Um, basically, the number displayed as the chance to hit is your chance to hit for full damage. But if you can add another 25% on top of that, and that's your chance to graze the attack, to kind of slightly miss or do a little bit less damage. Um, that is basically if you take the 75, um, so let's say the unit has a 75% chance to hit for full damage, you add another 25% on that and that's your hit chance to graze. So 25 plus, or 75 plus 25 is 100, that means a unit with a 75% chance to hit will never completely miss their attack. They could graze, they have a 25% chance to graze, but they won't ever completely miss. Alternatively, if a unit only has a 70% chance to land their full attack, they have a 70% chance to do full damage, 25% chance to graze, and then a 5% chance to miss entirely. And that's when things get dangerous because if you miss an attack entirely, um, it can hit a unit on an adjacent tile, potentially a friendly. So 75% is really that magic number for safety. I'm often comfortable rolling with a 70, just because even if you do miss, I think there's only a like one in so many chances wh I, what which adjacent tile they miss and hit instead. So the likelihood of hitting a friendly is still pretty low, but I, I, I you want to keep that number as high as you can. It's just interesting because I, although I have not been able, again, I have not been able to independently verify this mechanic myself. If I get a chance to look at the combat logs during ep this episode, maybe we can do that. But if, the, if that is how it works, then that's basically the exact same of how range attacks works in Age of Wonders Planetfall. So it would make sense, and I did kind of like that system. So I, I do hope that that is the case. Um, but yeah, if I get a chance to look at the combat log, I typically don't mess with the combat log, but if I can figure that out this episode, we'll take a look at it. Um, so also from, from uh, no, uh, moving on to uh, Clydon. Inspiring Leader is an ideal choice for me because uh, it would be a very useful with my um, units that are costing me in increased maintenance. So specifically, these mercenary guys right here, this is basically a reminder that these guys have the mercenary tag on them. So they actually cost an extra two gold to upkeep, um, which a normal tier one, you can see is six. These guys take eight, and then a tier two takes 12. 
So basically, I want to try to cut down on gold. It, it, basically, with the amount of gold that I have, it would regardless of what class I'm playing, picking up Aspiring Leader next would be a good choice because so much of my income is getting funneled into army maintenance. In fact, 160 of it is. So I really need to get that under control. I have a plan for that. I have a plan for what we're going to do with Washington. Um, but uh, we'll go into that uh, as soon as I'm done. I have a couple more comments to go through. Uh, also from Clydon, I should have picked this perk up right here before the last fight that gained plus three gold per unit tier of units killed in combat i was fighting some stuff up here and forgot to pick it up until afterwards fortunately i have it now so we're good to go going forward though uh, so i shouldn't miss out on any of that loot and then finally from an iron i could have avoided fighting the gremlins on the gold stash that was southeast of my capital until i had overseers to mind control them so for those of you who don't know reaver culture gets access to these overseer of units and basically they can subdue a unit if it's immobilized frozen or stunned and it's like a it's like a the unit becomes uh, basically stuck for the rest of the battle, and they become under your control afterwards. There were some gremlins, which I talked about how they're very useful for this build because of their uh, behind you ability. There were some standing on a gold stash southeast of my capital right at the beginning of the game. It might have actually been the first battle. If I had just left them there and waited until I had um, until I had uh, overseers, access to overseers, I could have gone and converted some. There are actually some over here, too, that I could do the same thing with. But um, I didn't do that, and I'm actually okay with it. They were standing on a gold stash that I took and put to good use, um, and I'll be able to make gremlins myself eventually later in this game. And as for this one, I don't think I really have the time or money to do it because I need to kind of stop doing unit production for a little bit and just use my units to kill things and get gold that way is, is kind of my current plan. So I don't think I'll be able, I'll have time to steal these guys anyway because I really want to clear that and get the 10 food and 10 uh, stability that it provides and link it to my city as soon as possible. But yeah, that's kind of just uh, something that I should keep an eye out moving forward. So thank you to everyone for your feedback. I, feedback, I appreciate it. Let's actually get moving on some of this stuff. Um, I want to first begin uh, by taking care of the issues with Washington, D.C. So I need to build a market as soon as I can to just start generating more gold income. And this alone is not going to solve my problems. I have to keep fighting stuff with Steve to generate more income. But I do need to focus pretty exclusively on getting a market and then a mint built because this city just is I'm, I'm just playing out of money so here is what we're going to do it's all about this province here i'm going to build a farm on this province but i need to be able to turn it to a desert so in order to do that i'm going to go ahead and start that scorch the land spell this takes up pretty much all of my mana uh, i will get a little bit back on the yeah. next turn um, but we can we can actually go to the next turn now i think and we'll just get into it and how i'm going to dig myself out of this uh financial hole that i'm in um so what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and use Imperium to buy that tile because I just finished the uh, the Wizard's Tower on this turn, yeah. So, which is good. I got an extra five Imperium per turn out of that. But I want to expand to get that tile. So I'm gonna burn a little bit of Imperium here and take this and build a, well, if I build, see, I'm not exactly 100% sure how this works. If I build a hut on that, will it become a farm immediately, or do I need to, like, repurpose it as a farm? Um, I'm actually not sure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it. We'll just, we'll just do it. Because I have to get it in my borders before I can use this spell on it, so. I actually don't know if this will work or not. Okay, yeah, it wants to stay as a hut. I wonder if that counts as a farm for purposes of the market. Uh, it does not. Okay, so we're going to have to flip that to being a farm. That's going to take three turns. That actually kind of puts a damper on things. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let the city just generate gold for a few turns. It's probably not a terrible idea anyway. Um, dang, I might have done this a little differently had I known that wouldn't work. That's, that's a little bit of a problem. Well, it's fine. This is still going to be this is still going to be one of the best tiles I could take anyway. But for the moment, what I need to do is get Steve's army down in that territory because that is now sand and there's a road there. Um, well, there's a road for part of it. Steve can now heal in that territory and move faster through it. So we're going to get all these guys down here. 
Oh. Um, I will take the faster units and try to pile them together. That's going to be these guys. Uh -huh. And probably one of the Harriers. And I'm just going to move everybody down this way. Okay. Uh -huh. Then I'm going to go ahead and take this fight here. That'll get me that gold stash which I can then start putting to use, and it'll also get me money for fighting all this stuff. We can try an auto. I do have an awful lot of units here. Yeah, that went fine. That went fine. So look at all that. All that for Washington, D.C., including a bunch of draft. I can't really make use of that right now. For one thing, draft is blocked. But for another thing, I don't have the money for it. I could use the money to go ahead and at least start the market or start something else and switch to the market. Um, but I think I might actually, I you know, I think I'm just gonna let it produce merchandise for a turn. I think that's okay. We'll get that extra 26 gold and try to get uh, mm -hmm. my finances back in order here a little bit. Um, let's move down here. What I wanna do at this moment is probably split, you know, uh -huh. I, okay, so I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, wait one turn because i can't really move any of the units in steve's army yet but i want to get them I, I need to get a stack separated out with steve and some of my best units to go after this enchanted den on the next turn that's gonna get me another probably big chunk of food for my capital too so that could help in terms of getting another farm out quickly which i'm going to want to do anyway because i'm going to want the mint that comes right after that uh right after that uh that market so yeah, let's see if I can do that. Cause I could attract population again at any time. Um, maybe I should just do that now. Just drop the 90 Imperium to boost it again. What does this count as when I quarry it? Or when I quarry it, when I annex it? It counts as a quarry. Um, so if I, if I expand the borders again right now, I could get another farm immediately and then just go immediately into the market production and get it done faster. That also gets me pretty close to, you know, let's wait until after I've, let's wait until after I've cleared this. Cause I'm gonna get a bunch of food which will discount the Imperium cost of another upgrade. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and start the market now. Cause we won't get it past that threshold. It actually, I could do it for two turns without getting it past the threshold to where I would miss out on the boost. So we can actually afford to wait a little bit on that. Um, oh yeah, I forgot I got this little spider guy up here. You can head back. And then I have my scout here. Probably want to start snooping around underground and seeing what I can find. I apologize, I didn't write down all the comments, but someone, and you can feel free to take credit for this in the comments if you like, but someone did mention that it's possible one of the dragons started underground and could be closer to me than what I was originally thinking. So um, yeah, I will want to keep an eye out for that. Uh, let's actually, on that note, pop down here real quick. Uh, there's a dragon infestation underground. Don't want to mess with that, so we'll go back up. I don't really want to meet the dragons quite yet. I'm good. I'm good with waiting. Um, I wonder if maybe I should actually do this battle now. It is going to be a tougher fight, but. If I do it now, then I can, then units can heal between this turn and the next. I think I might go ahead and do it. It says it's a low risk battle. Let's see what the auto says. I think, well, I, I know now that I'm going to do it this turn. Okay, so basically the unit died that I expected to die. We'll retry this one ourselves. I don't think anyone needs to die in this fight. Alrighty. Okay, so I have quite the army for this early in the game, and a lot of it's these hounds, which are great. I love them. Um, now, the Chaos Eaters are the most dangerous thing here, uh, but they're honestly... I don't think they're that super scary, as long as you avoid getting letting a lot of people uh, put negative status effects on your units. you got to watch out for any of your units that have negative status effects on them, because they're going to be a lot more vulnerable to the damage that thing can do. 
Um, I'm going to move forward probably as much as I can with most of these units and have Steve cast healing on him on this first turn. And give everybody a whole bunch of regen and stuff. Particularly, I want to focus it in on not the dogs, mm -hmm. if I can. Oh. So, let's see. I want to get as many of my better units in on this as I can. Look at all those hounds. Oh. This is great. Okay, move you here. Okay, and then I guess if, if a few pounds get regen, it's not the end of the world. I just wanted to make sure that most of the people getting regen were units that I intend to use or intend to keep around. Okay, there we go. Um, something like that will work. Yes. There. All right. Lots of buffs on everybody. Then we just need to worry about forming a line. I forgot these guys had Pack Hunter. I need to make use of that, too. Um, all right. So the Gremlins are right there. They could go after those Harriers, but they'd be quite risking their own skin to do so. All right. I think I'm just going to kind of move... Everybody, I've moved them all up about as much as I can. We'll just let the enemies move on this turn and kind of see where things land. Okay, they're going the way that my more powerful units are, which is good. They're also being aggressive, which is good. All right, I think I like how they're approaching me. This is fine. I need to get those dogs up front, though. Um, make room for them to get through. I think these Harriers, yeah. Here's what we're gonna do. Move those Harriers back, cause they took quite a bit of damage. And I'm gonna get them out of the way so the dogs can get through. I'm gonna go after that gremlin there, get a flank attack on him and see where he ends up. Okay, that's fine. Um, that adds a stack of mark to him and just sort of disrupts him. Um, the mage locks have a pretty good chance of hitting really whatever they want here. I think I'm going to try to clear out some of these little units that are just going to be damaging me over time. I do have a 70% chance to just kill that gremlin though, and they're arguably a bigger problem. So I might take that. Yeah, I'm going to take that. All right. Just get those little things out of here. They are menaces. They're very good for a tier 2 unit mm -hmm. when supported by other more powerful units. Um, how about you? You are technically a ranged attacker. He might kill the dog just because he can. I'm going to try to get... I'm going to try to get the dogs, these dogs that are back here, up in the face of these units. So let's move you here and just get these guys out to where they can take the brunt of the enemy attacks. They don't have to do anything significant or crazy right now. Oh, let's get that pack hunter bonus, yeah. But sundering enemy defense and marking stuff is more than enough for me. Um, yeah, let's, let's do this. Hit that one again. Okay. Then I can more safely move these guys up now. And let's see, could I actually... Because this guy doesn't seem to be able to hit... He can hit that unit, but he can't hit... And he can hit the dog, but he can't really hit much else. I wonder if I could pin him into place with a, mark, with a net. 43% chance to immobilize. I, um... You know, I'll take that. If nothing else, I think marking him would be useful. Okay, he didn't get immobilized, but that's fine. Let's back this one off. Move you up. And try to immobilize that that guy. That way, because he's a skirmisher, he could normally just walk away from those dogs and do something. Now he's pinned in place, can't do anything. Um, also probably want to see if I can immobilize that one so they can't do anything. And then I can focus... 
pretty much all of my heavy firepower on this top section. Okay, I didn't get the immobilize there, but it wouldn't really be safe for that unit to move anyway. Um, okay. So I don't have good lines of sight on a lot of this stuff because there's so many units that are kind of in the way. I think I'm going to try to get this hound through to go hit the gremlin and then see where the gremlin winds up. Um, yeah, and I'm going to get this guy out of here. I was going to call him Steve, but, you know, Steve's the leader in this game, so we can't have another Steve running around. Could be Dave, though. Oh, that's a good spot. All right, this thing's dead. Yeah, that's a 95% chance I'll take that shot. All right. Love that. Okay. Um, that thing's not really in any great position to do me much harm. I think I'm going to... Uh, its range attack is weird. Chaos Bolt has a range of three, but it's like it gets... It's getting one, two, three... It's acting like it could hit over there, though. But it's acting like it doesn't have a line of sight on any of my units from, from here. I don't know. Their range attacks is a little weird, it seems like. I don't know a lot about those Chaos Eaters, because I've never really used them much before. Um, but we are going to move Steve around to where he has an actual good angle at shooting the thing. See, if I moved him here, then... Oh, that red area is not telling me what I thought it was telling me. Um, I wonder if maybe I should rush it down with the pikeman. And at least just stand next to it. Hang on. What is this? I don't... I do not understand... If I click this, it says unleash a magical bolt at the enemy has a range of three. I don't understand the UI for this. Damage is fortified hot tools, havoc magic. Because normally if you click on that, it'll tell you, it's like giving me this weird AOE thing around whatever the target is. You can see that dotted line that's moving around. Whereas like a normal range unit, it would tell me, well, no, they don't have a normal range unit because I've killed other gremlins, but it would show Okay, maybe they've changed something with the UI, or I'm just crazy, but it's it's difficult for me to tell what they can actually hit. Because it says they can hit anything within a range of three. Oh, I guess it could move. Oh, wait, never mind. I'm... Oh, my gosh. Okay, it's telling me what its range would be if it moved. Okay, wow. I swear I know what I'm doing in this game. Okay, I get it now. So if it moves, like, here, then it could hit the pikes. Um, but it won't... It would only get two shots off. Okay, that will allow me to better prepare for a follow-up shot, I think. So I'm not gonna... I'm gonna move these guys here for now. We're gonna put Steve right there. Um, and I'm gonna leave only units that... You know, I, I can leave pretty much everything out of his range, because it's so short. And that way he can move and only fire two shots at most at any important unit and I'll be able to easily finish him off. Okay, and then I've got these Hound Masters here. These guys I wouldn't mind moving up. Uh, I want to leave them just out of range of that guy, but I think they could kill... Yeah, they could kill that Skirmisher so he can't even attack anything. And give myself a morale boost along the way, I'll take it. Um, yeah, and I'm good with this guy staying up here. He can stay there. These guys can stay here. I don't mind that spot. I think everybody is good where they're at. Oh, I've got these guys, Major Locks down here. Okay. That's good to know. Um, I'm going to move them over this way more. Actually, if I put them here, can that thing hit them? It would be able to. But they would be hidden in the trees. So I think I'm okay with that. Now nah, I don't want it getting in their face. We'll leave them over here. Okay. Okay, good. I uh, just wanted them to go after the dogs. That's fine. Those dogs are bait. Okay, we've got this now. 
Um, Steve can probably hit that guy from there, but if he can't, I could have him sprint and hit him. What was that all about? Alright, I, I think one of my dogs must have gone nuts. Uh, let's go ahead and mark this guy. I think the mage locks can hit him here from here. He is marked now, but we can add a few more stacks of that to him. I can run this guy around and hit him from that side. Um, I can probably get him with... No, I don't have uh, anything other than like a spell. What about this guy? What's Steve's chance to hit there? I would really like to turn him around. Okay, what if I was to... What if I was to just kind of go at it with um, Hound Masters, run them around the edges, and flank attack it a bunch of times, like getting them back over here? What would be the damage output? I think I could whittle that thing down. Steve's chances to hit are 100%. Unfortunately, the Mage Locks can't land a hit on this turn, but they can mark it which is going to increase the damage that I'm doing to it. So I'll make use of that. Move them up here and mark it. There we go. Puts them in defense mode. I'm gonna just shoot that guy with them. And with him being marked, I can then do a little bit of extra damage. I don't think I'm going to actually kill it, though. I would love to get a pike through and, like, push it towards me, but none of my pikemen can move quite far enough. I do have the designate target spell. Wanted to avoid using mana, but I think I want to avoid even more that thing having a chance at killing a friendly. So I think I'm going to use designate target on it. Yeah. That way, everything counts as a flank attack. Oh, that's what happened. They're going berserk. Because it's, uh, I think it's Chaos Aura or something like that. Chaotic Rebuke. Attacks within two heaven hexes have a 60% chance of gaining a random status effect. So they both randomly got berserk. Okay. Well... It won't affect Steve, so let's get that nice big meaty shot in there. Um, and I'm going to move this guy forward. I'm going to go ahead and use their drive back ability just to get an extra space and get a little bit closer to this one over here because I'm kind of trying to pin this guy in. Um, I'm going to have the Hound Master go through here so he can get the flank attack. He's stunned now. That's okay. The mage got a pretty good chance to kill... Or mage lock has a pretty good chance to kill him. Oh, this one actually can hit him from there with 100%. All right, and we'll get a crit for 59 damage. Okay, cool. That went pretty well. Once I was able to remember how the range attack UI works. Um, got a whole bunch of food from that too. So that helps towards getting this quite a bit. In fact, I think I may be able to grow the city again on the next turn because I'm going to clear this and get all the food that's in there as well. Um, now I just need to split off an army of the units that are in the best condition and then Steve can take them into the next cave. Well, I can do that on the next turn though. Steve's army is out of movement, so um, it's not going to be any of those guys probably. Well, maybe I will take an extra mage lock in with me. We'll see. For now, everyone can just chill there, recover a little bit. Rainbow Clover acquired, which grants me something that doesn't matter at all. But I will take the food. I will take the food from it. Um, otherwise, it's just improving my relation with independent city-states and stuff like that. Do not care for this game. Um, okay, that's just a warning that I found the dragon lair. Alright. Looking good. My Capital City's borders are bizarre, but it works. Uh, and I, there's no spells I need to work on. I actually just need to kind of save up mana. Probably going to need to use some in the fight in the Enchanted Den, because I'm limited to just six units in there. Okay. Is that 
market coming along. Okay, I really need to get another farm on this turn. I think I might be able to, though, by clearing the Enchanted Den, because that's going to get me a bunch of food. I just really want to micromanage those boosts to make sure that economy is running as smoothly as it possibly uh -huh. can. So, for this fight, we're going to take the best units uh -huh. that I can muster. Steve, uh -huh. uh, we're going to take the uh, gold rank mage lock there. We're going to take one of the gold rank mercenaries. We need something to get in the way of enemy units. Uh -huh. And then two gold rank hound masters. And then, uh, do I take another mage lock? Uh -huh. Do I take another Houndmaster? I think I might take another Houndmaster because they come with Warhounds. It's like having a free summon. Yeah, I think I'm gonna take another another Houndmaster. All right, so send the best units that I can in here. Low risk battle, there's a Druid, otherwise nothing too crazy scary. And there's no modifiers. Normally it gives you like a little story decision that you can make, but We'll try the auto. I might not even need to. Yeah. Okay, cool. Bunch of gold. And I should have gotten a bunch of food out of that too, I think. Maybe? Oh no, this gave me mana. Hmm. Not bad still, but... Wait, did it? Hang on. Didn't give me a lot. Huh, that was a little weird. I expected to get a little bit more out of that. Cause like this one gave me freaking like 400 food. That one didn't give me any mana. Where's my mana? Did it glitch? Not do the little story thing that it's supposed to do? I should have gotten a chunk of mana out of that as far as I know, that might've been a bug. At least mana, well, mana would have been really nice. Cause now I just got seeker arrows. I'm, I'm feeling a little gypped there. Set hands out mana as a guaranteed reward. Well, I guess we're gonna have to move on without it. All right, on that note, I will just spend the Imperium to build a farm, which I wasn't going to do, but it's fine. I was gonna need it anyway, so. Uh, which spot do I want to expand to though? Probably, probably out this way, towards where all this derelict workshop crap is. Although eventually these are all going to be farm. Well, actually, those could all be. That could be a whole bunch of quarries all in one spot up here. I could use this for farmland out here. Because um, I'm already building a farm there. Yeah, let's go ahead. It, it's some Because there's some structures that benefit a lot from being... Um, built next to other structures of their type, depending on what kind of special province improvements you get access to. This would allow me... I think this is a better one. It stretches out more towards these derelict workshops, which I'm going to have to spend some time fighting. So yeah, we'll take that farm right there. This boosts the production of the market to where it will finish on the next turn. And then the mint is going to take three farms, but I can at least get that started on the next turn. Um, oh, but it also requires a mine. That's a little bit of a hitch in the plan. I forgot about that. Um, maybe I can... I could ditch a... I could ditch one of the foresters for a mine. But I definitely want that mint. And this counts as a quarry. I could ditch a quarry for a mine, actually. I think it would have to be this one. Because it's got that uh, got that iron deposit on it. Because eventually I'm going to include that enchanted den into my city, and that'll count as a quarry. I think I would, in the long run, this might end up being a farm. But in the short term, I think I would rather switch a quarry for a mine. So we're going to do that. That'll be done in three turns. So I'll have to wait a little bit on that mint before I can even start to build it. But that's okay. All right, well, I feel like I got a little ripped mm. off down there. I should have gotten a mm. bunch of mana from that. But if anyone knows why I didn't, feel mm. free to let me know in the comments. Maybe I'm missing something. Mm. All right, uh, we're going to have these guys go back north. Now, I do remember that in a recent, in the last episode, um, there was a situation over here where these guys 
spawned an army and it said it was going to come attack me. So I could have some hostiles coming from the east pretty much at any time now. Oh good, Steve leveled up. We can get, um, we can get Inspiring Leader. Okay, that saves me about 10 gold per turn. It could be a little more, or actually, that's about as good as it's going to get, actually. Um, I think I'm going to put another Mage Lock with him. I can't do it on this turn, but we'll try to keep higher tier units with Steve to save as much maintenance as we can. I think that army, because these guys spawn the free hounds that can disrupt enemies on the way, I think just putting... Ooh, man, they could benefit from, like, ranged army upgrades too oh there's a lot I could a lot of mileage I could get out of these guys okay I've got a plan for that army first let's keep that spider coming back hopefully he doesn't run into uh, the army that's coming out of that city or that uh, infestation spawner to attack me uh, all right let's get this guy over in this direction and just explore what's in these mountain passes Okay, well, I really want to go after that city-state, but I've got all these all these spawners around me that I need to deal with. I think I'm still going to try to deal with these two spawners over here first. Then I might do the city-state on the way back and then finally go get this one. Um, if I get really lucky, there's an event that can pop up with these city-states where they're like... Hey, can you help us rebuild our defenses? Our walls are crumbling, and you can just be like, Oh, you don't have your no walls? Well, I guess I will come attack you. I'm kind of hoping that happens with these guys. Um, but uh, it's not something you can necessarily count on. Okay, so... Whoops, I forgot to set research on the last turn. Guess we'll get uh, spawn kin. Dang. I think I might have wasted a turn of research there. I don't know. If you forget to select a research, does the extra amount like still accumulate towards something, or does it just get wasted? If it does get wasted, then, um, well, my bad. Let's get you guys over here. Is there any movement to the east yet? No? Okay, we're good for now. Um, I should be able to at least stretch to get that derelict workshop. And I think everybody's actually at full health. I think. Yeah, everybody's at full health. So I can move all the way out towards getting that. Uh, we'll have Steve's army go as far as they can. And add one of these guys to it. Be the higher tier promoted one. Whoops, I was going to add a mage lock to it, not another one of these guys. Um, that's fine. We can just do this. Okay, give his army an extra mage lock. I want the, uh, let's see, anyone fast, so Warhound Masters to go there, and Harriers. Get the Harriers out there with the Hound Masters, because they're also fast. And then the rest of you guys can be kind of the ragtag group that follows everybody else up. There we go, that works. All right. Looks good to me. And eventually, you know, we've got the spider catching up, who does not see any enemy units yet, so maybe we're good there. I'm gonna grab that watchtower, which is maybe a little bit dangerous to do if I don't wanna meet the dragons, but I do wanna know if they're headed towards me, so. Washington DC produced a market. In 2024, they finally built one. Uh, so should I build something else while I wait for that mine to be ready for the mint? Probably. I think I'm going to be making enough money off of fighting enemy units that um, that'll be worth doing. I also probably have a massive backlog of draft. Well, no, I don't actually. That's just been getting wasted. So do I make an overseer to round out my army, get some healing? Or do I go straight for the market? I'm going to get units out of those infestations, too, or those derelict workshops. Um, let's see how city stability is doing all right. Tavern's pretty cheap for 20 city stability. I'll probably take that. 
because it's going to be that'll work out nicely because it'll be two turns until the mine is done the estate hall's tempting just because city growth is incredible but city growth doesn't really do you much good if you can't keep your people happy and because the tavern's so inexpensive i will grab that the mint i can i will have plenty of money to afford especially after i do a little more fighting Again, per turn income isn't the most important thing right now. It's it's fighting units. I'm just gonna get me a lot. I'm gonna get a lot more mileage out of that. That's where the most of my income is gonna be coming from. I do have enough to start casting seeker arrows, so I am gonna grab that. Yeah, and get that cast on all my range units on the next turn. That's gonna be a pretty big upgrade for those mage locks, and I have quite a few of them. All right, still keeping an eye out and keeping an eye out over here. But I don't see enemy any enemies coming. Gosh, I cannot speak today. I don't see any enemies coming towards me. I did just see some pop up about the seals victory though. Uh, what is this? No need to panic. I'll take care of the blessed souls, race relation, and mystery bonus. Could gain 18 knowledge per turn. I'll take the quest. Um, oh good, it's right there. All right. Voxibus the Forge Father has captured his first soul. Go to Seal's Victory. Okay, so how much time do I have? Occupy, defend a seal, collect 145 in total. Okay. So I know that this guy's caught. Okay, so it's telling me that he's got 145 turns before he'll win the game. So we've still got time. Um, I don't need to worry about that yet, but I need to keep an eye on it. Hopefully they knock each other off of the seals. I'd also know the seals spawn defenders. So uh, the AI, like independence, might fight back against him too. So it's not anything to panic about just yet. Uh, oh, I was like, I don't see any mage locks, but there's one standing back there. So just wanted to make sure they will benefit from Seeker Arrows. Steve will not. Um, he's not technically an archer unit. I have to upgrade his range separately. Um, but these guys now have it. So that's pretty handy. They got one plus one range. So they're basically snipers now, as long as I can keep their accuracy up. Okay, what have we got in here? That's, that's nothing too scary. We can handle that. Um... We could handle that on this turn, I think. Although, are they actually not on the... Hang on. Oh, there's going to be more in there, isn't there? Yeah. There's going to be more that I can't see. Ah, yeah, there's the rest of it. All right. There's the tier four ironclad. Okay. Um, what I want to do... What I normally like to do with these things... First, I'm probably going to have Steve set up a, um, a fort here. So that I have kind of an area to refuel. Uh, as I move forward to do that, I'm going to go ahead and grab this military engineering upgrade. Yeah, we'll do that. And that will allow me to even reach out and get like um, a conduit on this tile on the next turn. So yeah, we're going to have Steve go ahead and build, build a little fort. And then what I want to do is lure part of this group to trying to attack me out here. Maybe by putting them up on this cliff here. I don't think the whole group will come. The, the ones that are defending on the on the main tile probably won't do anything. In fact, I'd be... No, hang one, two, three. No, I would not be safe there, but I should be safe here from the, the main tile group. All right, and this should work. All right, get my little spider back. Hey, a production stash, a production stash pickup, nice. Um, okay, I got my other farm, so I have three farms now which means production of the mint is boosted. 
So as soon as that tavern's done, yeah, that'll all happen on the next turn. So I should be able to get that mint pretty quickly. Just getting all this financial stuff settled is the trick. Okay. All right, come at me, bro. Come fight me. Yeah, there you go. Okay, this is exactly what I wanted to divide and conquer here. I'm gonna auto combat. Ooh, that was ugly. All right, let's 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 do that correctly. These things are particularly nasty to the dogs because the dogs die so quickly and if you try to surround them, they're just gonna dump lava all over the dogs. So we don't want that. Um, and if we let those mage locks hang around too long, they're gonna mess us up too. But we've got extra range on ours now. That is a long, look at look at the amount of distance they can shoot, it's incredible. Because they already have plus one range. All right, I'm gonna move, uh, I'm gonna try to funnel this all into a fight right in the middle of the battlefield and just form a really good line. Keep the dogs in front but preferably away from that molten thing. I will be using a spell to make sure I kill that thing quickly because it's by far the most dangerous enemy on the battlefield here. Okay, and I want the other mage locks. I think I've got another one down here. Yep, okay. Get him up to the center of the battle. And I want to try to leave these more mobile guys on the flanks. These guys, the mercs I need in the middle. Uh, everyone's really spread out. But with that extra range, I should be able to pretty safely position my front line behind the wall of dogs and mercenaries. I just have to watch out for this stuff because that could really disrupt my formation if something targets me in the wrong spot. Now this guy is a charge unit, so he's gonna wanna come right after somebody and just dump lava all over the place. Um, I'm not going to designate him yet. I want to wait for the right moment to do that. For now, it looks like he's kind of splitting off. So I may be able to kill some of this stuff up here. If they even come just a little bit closer. Let's get this other mage lock. Right about, hang on, how far, what's their range? Okay, so I can safely move forward with the dogs just a little bit. and really force them to come just running at me because now this mage lock can hit that guy right there. Um, I want to make room for the pikes kind of towards the front here. In fact, we'll put this mage lock pressuring that guy there and leave Do I want to lure one of them into coming after the pikes, or do I just want them to full charge? I think I just want them to full charge. We'll try to make use of this. Um, here's another mage lock, another mage lock. All right, we'll put this guy here, because right now this one is threatening the enemy, and I'm going to leave this guy here, and I'm going to try to get these guys out way, way off to the side here. It's possible some might split around to go around that rock, but that's okay with me, because if they do, it takes them further away from their molten, uh, bubbly furnace thing. I believe that's the, that's the precise term there. I am going to leave quite a few Harriers down here, I think, because I may want to try to immobilize that thing. It can't hit anyone on this turn, so I'm just going to end the turn here and see how the enemy reacts. 
Okay, he could reach the dog, but that's okay. The dogs are there to... No, well, that's exactly what the dogs are there for. All right, so what are my odds to immobilize that thing? 43% is not bad. That is not bad at all. Um, I want to work my way down from this side here. All right, so we can get... Why is that not a flank attack? Oh, because he's on defense, right? Okay. Maybe I want to rethink that. Um, if I move here, it's a 95% chance to hit. Yeah, I want to hit this guy in the back with these, these units. Okay, a graze is fine. And a flank. And then I'm going to want to swarm at these guys with the dogs. Steve can do a ton of damage to that thing. So can really all my mage locks. I just need to get these guys out of the way. Um, I think what I'm going to do is get... Try to get this guy through the dogs so he can... So I'm trying to move the dogs in a way that they don't block friendlies. But I need to get this guy through the dogs so he can shoot the pike in the back. And then the dogs can finish him off. So if I do it like this put them here they can go like that and then if the dogs finish him off I just don't want the dogs to block Steve's shot but actually what I think I'm gonna do is have Steve go ahead and just take that shot anyway now then have the dogs move there and then I can use this guy with his net to finish off the pikeman yeah, that'll work. Have that guy finish off the pikeman with his net. I'm tempted to immobilize the robot, though. Is there anyone else that could kill... Okay, I'm gonna have... I'm gonna have this... guy here finish off the pikeman. So I would rather have this person try to immobilize somebody else. Maybe that guy down there. Got him. Okay. This allows me to open fire on all these guys. In fact, I'm going to mark them first so that they take more damage. Then I can just open fire and I can finish him off with another dog or really any other unit. Um, this guy can't do anything on this turn, so I don't need to worry about him. I would just prefer to keep units away from him if possible. Um, I think I'm going to take and hit the golem with a dog. I'm not worried about the mage lock. He can't do anything in the position he's in. So yeah, let's cancel the defense mode on this guy. Sunder his defense, mark him. So that should line him up for a lot more damage. I would like to take out one of those robots if I can. One of his stacks, essentially. Or units there we go we dropped one so that lowers his overall damage output and this will allow me to redirect some of these dogs down this way and I think I'm just gonna use them as fodder to try to prevent this thing from doing too much damage down here there is is worth noting there's a mage lock in the back that's kind of wandered off by himself I need to keep an eye on him now this thing can move one two three four spaces so one, two, three, four. From here, it could hit those guys in the back and I don't want that to happen. So we're gonna have to use something to block it. I don't have an extra dog, so it's gonna have to be the mercenaries probably. Um, who could then drive him back if they need to, but that's only if I can't immobilize him. I'm gonna try that first with pretty much anyone who can. Gotta move a little closer, all right. If I can immobilize him, that would be by far the ideal outcome. There we go. One of them landed. And he's quite marked as well, so. 
fact, I think I could flank attack him from over here. And I believe those guys should have a chance of hitting him on the next turn. All right, um, because he can't move, well, we're gonna leave that pikeman where he is because I can just annihilate him with range attacks on the next turn. Need to get that dog back into the action though. Okay, I think everybody here is good. I'm gonna leave the pike where he's at. He's good. All those units are good. I'm just gonna kind of position these guys here and position these guys here to prevent this thing from easily getting through at any of the units in the back. And then I think we're all right. That mage lock can only move on this turn and take aim. He can't do anything else. Okay, there goes one dog. And he just sits in defense mode. All right, looks good. I can I can pick apart the rest of this from over here. Just maybe be careful with where I leave these guys positioned. Although honestly, if that thing wanted to come charge attack the Hound Master, how much damage would it do? If I left the Hound Master's guard down, maybe I don't want to find out. Maybe we'll be careful with the Hound Masters. Yeah, we'll be careful with the Hound Masters. Very lucky that none of these have, have disrupted my army's formation because this would have been a bad battle for that to happen in. The idea here is I want to take as little damage as possible because I really need to be able to go right after the main encampment itself after this. Can you get all the way around to flank? No, you can't, but the dogs can just power through, so that's fine. Not sure how if, if it matters which one of those I hit, to be honest. Probably should hit the golem. All right, we'll do that. Okay, Steve, clear the way, please, if you would. You can't quite, actually. Um, maybe I will use the Houndmaster to do that. Yeah, I'll do that. Can move you. Wait, hang on. No, no, not yet. Back off. Have Steve take the shot. You guys both have first strike, so I can actually do that with these guys. There we go. Now, this thing might go after them. That's fine if it does. Um, but if I can, I want to hit it for a whole bunch of damage on this turn. Ah, oh, they're just out of range. Um, I can still mark it, though. And if I clear a path, I think that dog might be able to get to it. Yeah. Let's have you go out there and mess mess it up a little bit. Actually go there so you're not in the way of any mage locks. Now that will kill the dog, so I'm not gonna I'm not going to actually do that. I'm not gonna attack him because of the retaliation. But uh It is almost it would almost be worth it just to mark it though, wouldn't it? Now, we're going to force the mage locks to deal with the dog. That way they don't do anything else on this turn. And they'll be back them by themselves. And then I can deal with this thing on its own. Alright, I don't want to trigger a molten spill on it. In fact, I... Oh, you know what? As soon as I hit it with anything else, it's going to molten spill on the dog. Although I don't think that'll kill the dogs. It's, it's retaliation that would kill kill the dogs because that thing has charge resistance I think so that yeah charge is blocked so I can't disrupt it charge it to retaliate that's what would kill the dogs not the molten spill so I can deal with the molten spill a little bit I'm gonna go ahead and designate target which should have made it so that I flank it from regardless of whatever angle I hit did that not work I mean, it's mark times five, but it's acting like it's... 
thought designate target would make it so I was getting flank attacks on it. Apparently not. Okay, well from here they'll be able to shoot on the next turn. Um, same thing with these mage locks if I move them to like here. So we'll get these guys back in front. I'm going to back these guys off while trying to avoid the giant volcano plumes and whatnot. And we'll just see how they react to that. Okay, they're gonna kill the dog with that guy. That's an unusual decision, I think. Because now they're just charging their mage locks into mage locks into danger range. He's gonna have to move or he's gonna get hit by something. So far, I think I've avoided any of my permanent units from even taking a hit. Um, yeah, I guess you can't distract... Distract a counter type for awareness. All attacks targeting this unit are flanking attacks. Maybe you can't distract immaterial units like this. Juggernaut. Can't be morale changes. Control loss immunity. None of this says that you can't. Maybe it has to do with charge resistance. I'm not really sure. I don't see anywhere in here that says that these units can't be distracted. Uh, there it is. Constructs can't be distracted. Okay. Well, that's good to know. All right. Yeah. Well, we can, uh, we've got a full, like, line here that I can shoot at these guys from. Oh, I've been forgetting to use Mark Target. I picked that ability up on Steve and then just kind of haven't used it. Um, let's get him up to where he can be helpful here. All right, I want to get another dog in that thing's face right here. Yeah. Don't need to attack it. Although that's a flank attack. I actually could get away with that. This is actually working pretty well. All right. And then I want to get one here. This kind of prevents this guy from getting out of the way of the fireball, although I think it's got a couple turns before it actually lands. But it marks them again and cancels their defense mode, so now I can flank them and should be able to just kill everything now with the guns. Now he's immobilized, he can't move at all. Uh -huh. Killed my own dog, hound thing doing that, but that's okay. Did not mean to do a melee attack with them, but all right. And that should be it. Okay, absolutely flawless battle. <laughs> There's nobody even took damage. Um, the only problem is that I don't feel like I can go directly after, oh, a dragon met me. Kravkavir, the Collector. That just makes me think of the Marvel Collector guy. Um, I found him, though. He didn't find me, so the other dragons can't see me yet. But at least now I know where one of them is. Okay, I only have 34 well no i did get because that was in between turns so i did get more mana so yeah we can go straight after the rest of these guys um i don't think i want to build anything else here right now i'm just going to take the uh conduit i think right now yeah yeah that's fine take the conduit and then go straight after the derelict workshop this fight will be a little bit tougher but I don't think it'll be, it's certainly not unwinnable. Well, we should be fine. Oh. 
Especially since everybody's going into this with nice full health. Oh, I'm not really next to it, am I? Can I get away with an auto? Dang, no I can't. Yeah, this, these machines, these derelict workshop things, you gotta kinda really be careful with. Because they have so much firepower that you really have to respect. And some of them are very, very hard to kill. Alright. Oh gosh, how do I want to do this? This one's one, one of the messy green battlefields. I'm going to have a couple of these that I have to fight. Um, I mostly want to look at see what this thing's capable of, because... I want to know its range. Looks like its range is four, so I can still... My strategy of outranging them should still work. It's just that Barrage is a one hex radius ability and can really do a lot of damage if I bunch my units up, which is what I have been doing, is bunching them up. Um, this little guy ran off by himself, so I might be able to deal with him on his own. Let's, uh, well... Stick to the original strategy of getting the dogs out in front. Um, maybe I could actually get him to attack the dog. And then I could just get him out of the mix real quick. With this group down here. Try to keep my guys out of the glowy green goop. That's usually a bad thing in video games. Uh, this dog I want kind of going front and center there. With range behind him. And range support over here. That looks good for me on that side. And then again with the dogs in the front, just got to be careful where you move on this battlefield because they will path right through stuff. They don't even try going around it. And there are a couple mage locks back there, aren't there? Yeah, there's two. But I should be able to outrange them. Matter of fact, let's have Steve go right there. And a mage lock here and one here, and just have them behind the dogs. want one of these guys down in the center to assist Steve's group. I can have more. I usually try to keep these uh, hound masters on more like flanking positions, but having a couple in the middle won't be terrible. I'm going to send one way up here, though. And then I want one dog on that north side, too. Okay, that's about as good of a setup as I can come up with at the moment. All right. Let's see what they do. Pulling on up. Okay, I forgot that can be used after moving. But that's okay, because now he can't use it for another two turns. That should give me plenty of time to deal with everything they're going to try to throw at me. Okay, just need to mark some stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to start taking things out. He does have that big shot, but he's got to move to use it. Um, so basically, and the ironclad is also blocking that mage lock, so I don't need to worry about either of these two units on this turn. So that mage lock can't hit anything, and the ironclad also cannot hit anything. Um, so I do need to deal with this guy, which I was pretty well prepared for. I am going to move here so that I can take advantage of that flank attack damage. Yeah. 
Okay. And then he should be pretty easy to pick off the rest of the way. I can actually cancel his retaliation. Probably should have done that first. And then hit him with that. And... Yeah, just finish him off. Okay. These guys here are no longer in any danger. And if I can... I would love to immobilize that thing right where it's at. Also, can the dog... Oh, there's like poison gas there. I'm wondering if the dogs would prevent that thing... Well, no, if I move the dogs up, the mage locks will just shoot them off. So I would need at least two. Yeah. Huh? I have an idea here. But uh, I kind of need the dog to get out of the way for it to work. I was going to try to immobilize him with the Harriers. So he can't move on the next turn. But... Dog's kind of standing where they need to be. Alright, I'm going to pull the dog back. We'll put the Harriers up front. Just for this turn. We'll probably switch that back on the next turn. Okay, did not get the immobilize, unfortunately. So he's still free to move on the next turn. Uh, but that's okay. I'm gonna use these dogs more on this north side now, I think. Um, I would like to... Can I immobilize that guy up there? I don't have any Harriers in the area, so I can't. He could charge across and go after the Pikes. What can you guys hit? And you guys? Okay, they actually have a chance to hit that thing. Not a bad chance, either, because it's been marked a couple times. I'll take that shot. Uh, even on a graze, I'll still take that shot. Um, there's a 60% chance. I would prefer to mark him first, so let's do that with Steve. Bumps it up to 70. Yeah. Get these guys out of the way early. And then I think it's time for the dogs to fulfill their cannon fodder role. Although I'd really like to kill that thing so the dogs can get around that unit in the back. There's also that mage lock that could do quite a bit of damage to something if I don't deal with it. Um, if I could get a dog to the mage lock, that would be awesome. Otherwise, I could just back away from the mage lock. It doesn't have very good chances to hit anything. I might do that instead, lure them a little closer. I could shoot that and dump fire on the mage lock. Actually, I could do that a few times. That's that's not a bad idea. Yeah, set him on fire with his own unit. Um, I do want to use you there. Even a graze I'll take. And I'm going to back off most of these other guys. Leaving the dog up front. And I'm hoping he just charges in and goes after the dog. The mage lock has a 40% chance to hit the dog. So... I'm hoping he grazes or misses. Um, oh, if I hadn't moved that guy there, I could have gotten one more shot off at this thing. That's okay. All right, and then I think with the rest of these dogs, I am just gonna, you know what? I'm just gonna throw this one at them. Cause I can't quite kill, oh wait, yeah, I could. If I move the dog up, I can also move an archer up. You'll have to go through the poison. Now, you know what? We're going to undo that. This dog is just there to get in the way. That is his only purpose. And then this one. I feel like I could easily kill that dog with another... I wonder if I could use a... Um, suppressing barrage here if that would be good nah it wouldn't really help that much 
Okay. I could distract that guy, but or designate target and distract this guy, but it seems like a waste on a unit that's already at such low health. I wish I had one more range attack I could get off on him um, without having to run units through the poison. But uh, that may be unavoidable. And it would put them in range of the mage lock if I did that, which I don't really want to do. I will go ahead and do it. It's not that much damage. Huh? Yeah. And it does let me get a much better position on this guy with these dogs. Okay. Houndmasters. One's down here. Uh, they kind of probably need to go more towards the center of the battlefield, I would imagine. This dog, though, he's going to need to be right in the middle of everything shortly. Um, mercenaries need to go front and center. I'm not sure how I'm going to get them through there. Actually, I think I have an idea for how I can do that on the next turn. For now, they can stay there. And what unit has actions left? These guys. Okay. End the turn. I think this is fine. The dog should be enough of a distraction that the enemies will just go after them. Oh, I think they just got hit by a fireball that I didn't even notice was there. Ouch. They can move and use that too. Okay. Gotta pay more attention, but yes, that is a move and then shoot ability. Okay, well, fortunately, they're alive, and I don't think they have the volcanic heat. Okay, unit cannot regen. Okay, we gotta get that guy out of there, um, and make sure I don't accidentally run through a poison cloud on the way. Fortunately, this thing has just completely made itself vulnerable doing that. I'm gonna work from the top down, I think. Uh, this will take this guy out of commission completely, as far as I know. Um, how often can you use that? Once every few turns. Okay. I should probably take this shot here. I was just wondering if I could mark the target first, but I don't really have units that can right now. Um, I think I may be able to surround this thing and prevent it from doing any more damage. If I can just get units on both sides of it, it shouldn't be able to move or do anything. I need to clear these guys out of the way first though, uh, which I should be able to do without too much trouble, I think. I just need to make sure that I leave a path for somebody to get through. Probably that horseman there, okay. So if I use this guy to damage him, the archers can, or the musketmen, can finish off him. That allows these guys to get all the way through. I need to kill them. Okay, so this should be easy. You just move up like this. Okay. Now I can't move them because he's still got zone of control. Hang on, is that actually something I can step on behind him? Whatever it is is poisonous, but willing to deal with that because it will still prevent him from moving at least I think it will how can I get around this 
Because I'm not 100% sure if the archers actually exert any sort of zone of control. Which would include the hound masters. I'm not sure that they will prevent this thing from just moving away and shooting me. I think what I might have to do is pin him a little bit more awkwardly with these two units uh -huh. by standing one in the poison like there, which is fine. I'll do that. I was hoping to avoid it, but... Ooh, hang on. How many stacks of poison did he just accumulate? Uh -huh. Poison times five, four blight damage each turn. He's, yeah, well, he's not gonna be feeling so good. But this will at least pin this thing in here. So it can't move or do anything. And I'm gonna just back this guy off. Get him well away from, well, not all the way down there. We gotta watch out for those fireballs. They're a little hard to see on this map. All right, and then I still have to deal with this thing up here. Okay, fun times. Uh, Steve, can you shoot that? You can, how about you guys? You've already oh. shot. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, just do that. I think we can whittle it down enough. Um, there are those explosive barrels right there. I'm wondering if it would do me more good to shoot the explosive barrels. Though I'm having trouble targeting them, it like won't let me. Okay, there we go. Hold Alt to target, right? I don't know if it would do me more good to target them or to flank around and try to get a, a different angle on the thing. I think, I think the flank attack would be potentially more damaging. Oh, that is a flank attack right there. The problem is this thing's going to do full damage when it comes out swinging, so... I may want to just back off and focus on defending against its charge. He can come crashing into the middle of all this if he really wants to. I think my units will be able to hold up to it. The Hound Masters are pretty vulnerable. Um, the Mage Locks have a little more health. So yeah, I think I'm going to back off. I need to get this guy out of here. Okay, you can go all the way over here and help help with this. Okay. I think I'm all right with that. He can come get in here and mess some stuff up, but he won't actually kill anything. Just wish I had a way to immobilize him right now. And then the only unit he can hit over there is the mage lock, which I'm fine with. Okay, I think this is as good as it's going to get for this setup. Oh, I had another uh, Harrier over here. Well, it doesn't matter now, but he could have helped. Um, did that guy just get hit or did, by me, or did he try to move? Okay, I kind of knew he would go, th that thing would go there. But the important thing is this ironclad cannot move. So we've got it pinned and can just, we can just poke it to death now. Need to get that guy out of the poison if I can. <laughs> it's just poison clouds freaking everywhere. <laughs> You know what, dog? Go get him. There you go. Now, I gotta get away from this thing. Um, 
This is actually a little bit of a problem. You know what? I think it's okay. I think it's okay because because Steve can sprint and shoot it, and the molten spill isn't going to kill that mage lock. I'm actually just going to put that mage lock on defense. If I try to move it away, it will take an attack of opportunity, I believe. I think this thing can still do attacks of opportunity. Actually, hang on. Does it? Oh. Let me pick a unit that I know for sure can, like these mercs. Drive back defense mode, melee strike, Meat metal, land movement, pull arm, sand walk. Yeah, it doesn't actually specify opportunity, attack of opportunity anywhere in the unit's modifiers. So I'm going to assume they can do that. And I'm going to act accordingly. So yeah, you guys defend. Um, I'm going to try to kill it with as few shots as possible. Which means Steve's going to need to take a step into the lava here. But he could stand right behind it and just fire point blank. If I mark it enough times. Yeah, let's see. Uh -huh. Sprint. Yeah. I go there, I take damage, but he should still be able to shoot. He can't. Oh, because he's moving into water. Okay, that's a problem. Oh, wait, no, he can. He can. We're good. All right. So I need to do another. I want to only do this in two hits here if I can. And it should be able to. Okay. I think we've got this. All right, okay. nobody important dies. And that thing's dead. I got a mage lock out of it, all right, cool. Can't really hardly afford it, but <laughs> all right. And I actually got a pretty good uh, tier three orb there for whenever I get a new hero. All right, well, I'll take the reward. Um, and then everyone needs to go back and heal very, very badly. Oh, those fights are tough ones. But that's one less derelict workshop I need to worry about. There is another out here, but that's going to take a little bit longer to get to. Let's just uh, go back and lick our wounds for a little while. Where'd that extra mage lock go? What race are you? Dwarven Conquerors. Hardy, tough, and defensive tactics. Well, that's not the best, but... We'll make use of him. Wait, does he have a poison modifier? He's got poison arrows. Okay. Cool. Just have to remember the guy with the poison shot won't be quite as um, accurate. Hmm. Alright, everybody can go camp for a little while in our new outpost. I am gonna probably should I go ahead and build walls here just because I mean it is kind of a front line spot I want to see what's down there I kind of want to build another another unit to go explore it if I'm being honest I just don't know how much money I have I am making a lot of money but it's kind of temporary money because it's not permanent income it's just coming from uh the constant stream of fighting enemy units uh let's go ahead and get that mint in fact i think i there was a production resource i was about to pick up with one of my scouts yeah right there that f should finish off the mint and of course we've got this other derelict workshop to worry about up here maybe i can take that tower Yeah, they're going to need to spend probably two turns healing up here. I am going to switch. All right, we're going to mix uh -huh. this up a little uh -huh. bit. I'm not going to bother building walls on that outpost. Its purpose, it, for its purposes, it doesn't need them right now. We are going to swap. Oh, that's a mage lock, a gold rank mage lock that's so beat up. Um, so I want to go after that as soon as I can. 
it's just two tier threes. They shouldn't be anything dangerous. Uh, we'll take the time to let everyone heal properly. We'll spend the extra turn for it. Especially since that guy needs help just as much too. All right, little spider guy. Keep coming back. I would really, would really love to evolve that spider. Okay, we've kind of explored pretty much all the important stuff here. That's just mountains, so... I'm gonna take one of these guys and, you know, there's nothing further that way. I'll see what's out here in the in this these corners. Or, actually, hang on, that's an extra unit. I can just have him go explore those caves. I wanna see what's down there. Okay, we're just gonna leave that outpost as is. I'm not gonna put any more money into it right now. We don't have the money to spend. Um, end the turn. I think we're good for the moment. So if an outpost doesn't have walls, I actually honestly don't know this. If an outpost doesn't have walls at all, does the even like the rule of like keeping units inside or outside the walls from being on either the hex or the six adjacent hexes, does that even come into play? Like if I had these guys standing out here and uh -huh. somebody attacked this army, would it pull in the armies inside the city too? Or would it not do that? Because if the city has walls, I know it won't. This units that are on the city or a tile adjacent to it will stay in the walls no matter what. So unless the person in the walls is attacking, then they'll help. Okay, select new research. Blades of the Horde. How many two research cycles? I want to make sure I get Sundering Blades out of this. Um, this one's a handy one. That one would also be handy, but I think this would be more useful right now. Copper golems are good too. Um, they evolve, which is nice. Uh, which would I rather have between the two? You know, having a direct damage spell on a single unit comes in pretty handy pretty often. So I think I'm going to grab Blaze of the Horde. And we'll focus on I don't know. The other one might have been a better choice because it would give me a way to summon units instead of buying them. I probably should have gone with the copper golems, but uh, we'll, we'll stick with it. Blaze of the Horde can be pretty good. And with the hounds, it gives you makes it easier for you to surround enemy units. It can be made even better. So it's not the worst choice. It just might not have been the best one. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the estate hall now for that extra growth, because I want to keep this city growing. Um, and in three turns, it will have grown, and then I can build the next town hall upgrade, and we can start maybe making some cannons and stuff. I'll worry about those specialty structures later. In the meantime, do I want to make any more units? I kind of really want at least one overseer out there. Um, I think I'll drop the money on one. I'll drop the money on one overseer. Uh, maybe I might get two even. Because <clears throat> I would really love to start con take capturing enemy units and growing my army that way. We'll see how much money I have after that one's done building. In the meantime, I want everybody as close as they can get to the edge here so that I can go rushing out at those blessed souls probably on the next turn. Get that quest done. All right, so with that being explored, where should you go? I will probably poke my nose up in this mountain pass over here. It's I'm at that awkward moment where like I don't want to explore too much further just to get more of the dragons aggroed onto me. Um... Do I want to go ahead and cast Spawn Kin? Increase number of units information. And plus 20% damage for non-hero units. And more evasion for hero units. It is good with the mage locks. It's also a lot of mana. I think I probably do want to go ahead and do that. 
Because I've been pretty good about avoiding damaging the important units anyway. So yeah, we'll go ahead and grab Spawnkin. May as well get it started. Okay, what turn are we on? It's turn 24. I need to... Uh-oh. Voxaboss the Forge Father. Okay, still have only met two, which means I'm the one seeing them, not the other way around. There's a pickup right over there. That might be free. I should maybe go get that. What was that? Something flashed up there, and I'm not sure what that was. Unidentified forces detected. If that was one of the dragons, they may all find me. Or at least one team of them would find me if they explore, follow that unit. New Empire development skill is available. I will take that right now. City structures cost less to gold, or less gold to build. Um, this could be good for growing my army, but it might almost grow it out of control. Uh -huh. Alright, I think... I'm beginning to think that derelict workshop is far enough away that I would rather turn and go after Grim Rise here first. I need to get a second city and a second hero out. I am going to go ahead and deal with this, though. Um, I'll let this army that's a little faster kind of take point on this. Uh -huh. Steve's army just needs to get close enough. Uh -huh. And we'll have the Hound Masters initiate combat. Okay. Discouraged attackers is active. Is that just a morale penalty? No, that's fine. This should be easy. Yeah. Okay. What do I want? The victory shows that the IRS should have better defenses. <laughs> this is going to be a weird series, guys. <laughs> uh, this only illustrates that my empire... So I could get Imperium. I could get quite a bit of production but it would really only boost the estate hall by one turn. I think I'm going to take the Imperium. I can wait on the Overseer, because my army's heading back that way anyway. I'll take the Imperium. You can never go wrong with more Imperium. Maybe I want to start grabbing some of this stuff. Very close to that, though. I'll have that in two turns. City cap, digging, road building. Road building is something I should use more, but right now I don't feel like I have the money to spare on it, so I'm not going to do it at the moment. But it is pretty good. <laughs> Had multiple people point that out in the comments. Okay. Well, we're going to leave these guys all at least grouped up, just in case something jumps them. But I think it's time to go after Grim Rise up here. As long as there's nothing really nasty waiting for me right underground. No, there's a lot of diggable terrain down here, though. I think I might stick down here and explore a little bit. Maybe even upgrade to where I can dig. That army that it said these guys was sending after me kind of just never showed up. So I wonder if that's ever going to happen. How are we doing here? Two turns on Overseer, two turns to State Hall. Looking good. Economy, e economy is slowly bouncing back. We're getting there. Just gotta cool it on the on on the unit spam a little bit. Let's see. Do I want to take that? What is what is that? Is that a mana stash? Knowledge stash. Ooh, I wouldn't mind a knowledge stash. But I also probably want to get these guys... Who's damaged? Is anyone hurt? Uh, just that guy is a little bit beat up. I think I'm going to ignore pretty much everything and just go after Grim Rise for now. Also, I need to remember to keep an eye on... 
where's the victory conditions? I can never remember where that is. Diplomatic quest. I think it's under quests. Yeah, seals victory. So he's got four. 141 turns to win. I wish I knew where his capital was. Rum City is not discovered. Does anyone else have a bug with all these? Oh, now it's not doing it. Yeah, I see all these flickering little visual artifacts that are being recorded. Like, what is that? Does anyone else have that bug, or is that just me? All right, I think I'm going to put this guy here so he gets that last little bit of extra health. And then from this angle, we'll charge Grim Rise. I should have, my army should be plenty powerful enough to defeat them at this point. I can also finally get my little spider buddy in here. Yeah. All right, this looks fine to me. Maybe I want, let's see, where's that overseer going? He was gonna go for that pickup, if it is a free pickup. I feel like I would have grabbed that earlier if it was a free pickup, but maybe I just overlooked it. No, it's not a free pickup, now I can tell. Just had to get within sensor range. Okay, so that is a dead end down there, but if I go north, maybe more. It's not a bad underground area. Okay, let's make everybody little. Oh, I forgot <laughs> that it gives everyone disproportionately long or large hands. <laughs> I don't... Uh, I, I don't it's, uh, it's like an uncanny valley thing <laughs> about that with me. Oh, well. Just <laughs> look at... Oh, hang on. He's not the best example. Look at Steve. <laughs> Dude never skips forearm day, apparently. All right, well, we're going to roll with it. Steve will be harder to hit with range attacks, and everybody Ooh. else will have... Uh, we'll do more damage. Um, that's fine. This is fine. All right. Moving swiftly onward. There's another structure I could take up there, but now we're starting to see... Oh gosh, what is the Eye of Steve. A new cult called the Eye of Steve has risen in your city of Washington, D.C. I don't... Oh my gosh. Followers of this cult has spread across the city. Uh, they claim that I'm all seeing... Okay. Uh, the Eye of Steve rules Washington, D.C. with an iron fist. They expect you to guide their piercing gaze. Uh, I could get a ton of production, which might not be the best thing, because that production means spending gold. For six turn, Washington's Washington, D.C. gains 36 gold per turn. That isn't bad. It's not really a lot of gold when you add it up, though. It's only like... A hundred and it's only about 200 gold in total. Or would I rather just take the Imperium? This is kind of a tough call. I think I'm going to, okay, I'm going to take the production because that will get me to the town hall upgrade faster, which I think is this turn that I can start building that. Hopefully I'm right about that. Yeah, because I would really like that town hall upgrade. And yes, I think I can. Yes, I can get that on this turn as soon as I expand the city's borders. Um, what do I need next? What isn't boosted already? The blacksmith would require two quarries. That's right, because I got rid of a quarry. Well, I'm going to annex. Oh, I want to annex that. Oh, no, it's a couch 22. I want to annex this, but I can't annex it without building the uh, town hall upgrade, but I can't build the town hall upgrade. Oh, I don't. I can't build the town hall upgrade because I don't have enough money for it. 
I could fix that if I fight something. Okay, never mind. It is boosted because it just requires population 10. It doesn't require the province. Okay, so I need to fight something on this turn. So slight change of plans for Steve and his group. Um, do I want to take them on? I don't really want to take them on. Uh, -huh. uh I could take that group. It'd be a little easier. And it would get me some knowledge, which would be nice. I could get Sundering Blades, finally. Um, yeah, we'll take that. So, yeah, it's either go after that, which is maybe a little more bang from my buck. Equal effect. But is going to probably result in me having to fall back. I could... You know what? I could do this. I could do Scorch the Land. I need to get this, too. Both of those are important. Dang. I should have gotten this a while ago. Um, you know what? Let's take Engraving of Focus. Because I need to get that up and running. And then the city gets to live a little bit longer. Well, you know what? No, I am going to go straight after these guys. I am. Um, because we've got, our army's big enough to handle this. It can't be too passive. The only problem is I won't be able to turn around and heal on this turn, but I wasn't going to be able to do that anyway. Everybody's going to have to go back into the outpost. But I probably, part of the reason that I think it's a good idea to take this out is because the reward that I get from it in terms of resource pickup should be pretty nice. And I'll kill enough units to easily make the gold needed to get the next uh, upgrade for the town hall and incorporate the enchanted den into my territory, which will help with mana in the long run. So I think this is still a good choice. Okay, we're gonna auto. I'm probably gonna have to do this manually. No, they got it. All right, I'll take that. 128 food, okay, great. And a whole bunch of gold. That gets me enough to where that I can, I can build the town hall upgrade in a single turn. Love that. Um, I can get something else on top of that too, but first, let's pick up the enchanted den so that I have that wonder in my territory. Then probably next tile I'm gonna wanna go for is continue my original plan of getting the layer of silk down there. But that's in the future. For the moment, I am making pretty good gold per turn. Um, and I have overflow of production. What do I want next in this city? Stonemasons would give even more production, which I actually don't really need right now because I'm kind of out of gold. But the blacksmith also I don't really need right now because I'm kind of out of gold. Hmm. I could get some of these special provi specialty province improvements. I think in the long run, this is all going to be a big group of farms down here with, uh, well, actually the mob camp benefits from, well, actually the mob camp does, doesn't benefit from any specific province improvements. I should probably take a look at these, like Reaver Manufactorium. This one gets, is good with adjacent quarries or quarries, foresters, and mines. Um, and generates gold, which would be really good. I need to get this online pretty soon. Uh, question is, if I just produce merchandise, is all that extra production just going to get turned into gold? It probably would be fine if it did. I think that's part of the reason why my gold income is so high on this turn, is because currently... It's set to produce merch merchandise with that surplus of production. So it sort of translates into gold. I need to find a good spot for this. Um, so it needs to be next to quarries, foresters, and mines, which is actually pretty easy to do. I could make a whole area out there for it, although I would rather get it earlier than that if I could. 
in the long run, this is it might go there actually, where that farm is. I don't know. I need to just fill out my air, my territory a little bit more. I think I'll probably go ahead and build the blacksmith just to get the extra draft and then produce merchandise. Let's see if that impacts the gold income per turn. I think it will. No, it didn't. So that's actually just solid gold income per turn. Okay. Well, that's looking pretty good right now. I can't afford to build anything in my capital on this turn, but it has grown to a pretty solid point. All right, this guy's going to have to go this way because I have to cross through enemy territory up there. Uh -huh. All my units here are yeah, they're a little beat up, so yeah, we're going to have to go back. And I can't heal in this land. I have to get back to the desert. They're not that badly. Well, I guess the Houndmaster kind of is. All right, we'll, we'll fall back just long enough to heal. Uh -huh. on the next turn, and then I'll turn around and go back north again. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And you should go this way, I think. Maybe push my luck a little bit. I want to have my overseers in position to where when all the dragons do see me, I can like rush them with scouts and find their capitals as quickly as I can. Okay. We're looking good in Washington. Everything is good. We've produced the blacksmith. Holy smokes. A lot of upgrades. Okay, when you win a battle, you have a... Oh man, I should have gotten that earlier. Well, I'm gonna take it now. Got the Imperium for it. And I am going to be winning a lot of battles, so... This will help uh, help me get extra free units. Hopefully some of which will be overseers. I could really use more of them, but at least I have one out. All right, and when I get this engraved focus, this is going to be huge because I'm gonna actually cast that now. That's going to benefit my Hound Masters allowing them to benefit from focused aggression, doing more damage to marked units. That's kind of huge for me. So I will make sure to make good use of that. Okay, we got 118 gold. What do I want to spend it on? Or should I spend it at all? Um, I want to build that Reaver Manufactorium. I think, actually, that wouldn't be a bad spot for it, right where that farm is. Because I could surround that with quarries. But I also want to make sure the Rune Carver's camp gets in a good spot, too. This is going to be the best spot, though. The Reaver Manufactorium gets adjacent dra extra draft for adjacent stuff. Um, it would actually maybe fit better here because it could also benefit from the forester that's already up there, even though I may eventually turn that into a mine. I'm not really sure yet. Uh, so yeah, whenever I can expand over there, I think maybe I'll put it there. For now, I might just do wizard tower upgrades or not even bother with, well, you know, I should get the bathhouse because that can increase overall city income through city happiness. I'll do that. We'll work on the bathhouse. That seems like a good next thing to build. Washington, D.C. is getting pretty big, and it grows fairly quickly, so I'll take it. All right. I want to have you take the shortcut up there so you can join everybody. We're going to have to drop a unit here. Um, probably going to end up being the mage lock that isn't from the IRS. All right. I want you guys here. This group actually doesn't need to be behind. They can be in the desolate terrain because they don't have anything that needs to heal. But Steve's group needs to be there. And then we can swap out whoever I, I want to on the next turn. And then we'll make that push towards that city. Uh, new Empire Development skill is available. Yeah, I will, I'll take that. Farms grant more food. That's just always a good choice. Um... This guy go a little bit further. 
Oh, I see yellow, but yellow doesn't see me. Good to know where they're at, though. Okay, so I know purple, let's take an overall view here. Yellow is here, purple is here. Um, I should probably see if they're on the same team. In any case, I'm gonna back that scout off in a little bit now because I don't want yellow to know or see me. I should check though in the diplomacy menu. I'm still not used to this layout here. So this guy, so they're on the same team, yellow and purple. They're probably on like the good dragon team. Or no, that might be the bad dragon team. Yeah, that's the bad dragon team, I think. The, that's be like the, yeah, that's the soul magic or whatever. And then that one's probably Materium. Yeah, that would be Materium. And he's the shadow affinity. Okay, and so that's probably Materium, Shadow, and Chaos versus Astral, um, Nature, and whatever the, the High Culture order. All right, well, it's good to know they're on the same team, and they're also close-ish to me, so that leaves the question of where the others are. There's probably some further out to the west, too. It's got to be careful as I expand. All right, well, I think we're in a pretty good position to end the episode here. In the next one, we will uh, go to war with Grime Rise is the plan, and I'm going to uh, try to grab a second city. And this was going to be a nice city because it's got that mage tower up there. There's a lot of nice resources around it. That would be a really good second city. I'll just kind of make that my, uh, my second home, I think. So hopefully the... Uh, Whatever these creatures are, don't mind too much. Thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate it. Hope you're enjoying this series so far. I think it's been... I think we're off to a pretty good start. I haven't played perfectly or anything, but I rarely do. But I think all things are considered, this is a pretty solid start, it feels like. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. And I will see you all again in the next episode. Special thanks to all my Patreon supporters, including Tier 3 supporters Blitz, Brayden, Dawson Horner, Jimbro, Roderick, Sarah Feingold, and Tibian Army. Thanks so much, everybody.